It's Legendary Beats. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for watching. And if you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing. So a popular club owner based in Lagos by the name of Richard Namdi, owner of Club Escape, is calling out some of his wealthy celebrity clients for owing him a lot of money. Apparently, these celebrities will go into his club, order foods and drink in the millions and not pay their tabs. The man claimed that he is now in debt and his business worth hundreds of millions of naira is closing down and he's going bankrupt. He only mentioned a few celebrities, but he's threatening that he has a lot more names that he hasn't called that they should come out and pay their tab. Otherwise, he's going to put them on the blast. Take a look at this video and I'll be back with the rest of my thoughts. Live at Cool FM, we're about to go live. Shaking tables is fuck you season. If you're owing me money, pay up. Real quick, real quick, real quick. Real quick. So good morning, everyone. Yesterday, after listening to Tiwaz's cover for Kiss Daniel's Fuck You, um, put me on a thinking spree, you know. Escape had to close because we were in debt of over 120 million. And this debt was include a range of artists, your biggest stars, you know, people that you wouldn't believe all. A lot of people, big brother housemates, even babes on this list, even some boys that if I catch, I go beat for streets. And they tell you, oh, I'm going to chop beating on. If this list don't make you drop this money, I go brush you anywhere where I see you. Yes, you go chop that brush it. I will seize your car and I'll fuck you up. Tonto, I'm sorry. You said I shouldn't do this, but you know what? Nobody's going to knock on my door now. My business is closed and my staff can't feed their families. I say, yo, Richard, I owe you 10 million. I owe you 5 million. Here's your money. No, they won't. And like his Daniel said, it's fuck you season. It's time all of you go down. People need to know how you guys are fucking up people's businesses and carrying hand. So you guys just saw that. Like, this is so crazy. I mean, who does that? No responsible business owner would run a business the way that this fool is running his business. I mean, a responsible business owner knows that you must collect your cash before any of your clients leave the premises. Otherwise, it's bye-bye to your money. You're not going to see it again. Or at least it's going to take a couple of weeks or even months if any, if at all, you get your money back. Problem is that many of these business owners want to be friends with their celebrities, so they let them buy on credit with a promise to pay later. Well, look at how that great idea has worked out for him. His business is now going under, and the people who helped him wreck his business are nowhere to be found, to the point where he's now going on social media to basically call them out and force them to pay or threaten them that he's going to expose them if they don't pay the money. I mean, it's better to have a standard. Let people know that you don't sell on credit. Let people know that you don't do business on credit instead of playing nice and end up ruining your business and ruining your life. I mean, seriously, who nice guy help? Who friendship help? There's a reason why they say you don't mix business with friendship. There's a reason why they always advise you never to miss business with pleasure because once you do that, it's always hard to separate the two. Your friends and families have money to pay immediately when they order or they buy things from people they don't know, you know, but when it comes down to you, they want to buy on credit and pay later. When you do that, you're basically ruining your business. It's always important that you separate the two. Separate your business from your friendship. Separate your business from your family. You know, if you don't do that, you end up like this fool right here. What I also find interesting is how the celebrities, they will go on social media or go wherever and be talking about how much money they spent at a club. They talk about how much they drop at a club, not knowing that majority of the celebrities are buying all of these things on credit with promise to pay later but they'll go on social media pretending like life is so good that they have it all good that they are dropping all these millions and billions or whatever whereas they're actually buying on credit that is how a lot of people get themselves in trouble especially people who look up to celebrities who imitate celebrity lifestyles you see celebrities you see what they're doing and you want to do it this is the end result. You don't have the kind of relationship that these celebrities have with business owners. And then you, 
thinking that you want to flex you go to a uh, to a business you go to a club you drop a lot of money money that is meant for your child's school fees or whatever you spend it on drinks on uh, one night and then you go home your kids can't go to school the next day because they haven't paid their school fees you know whereas these celebrities they already have this arrangement with these club owners whereby they can buy drink and do whatever and pay later they don't have to have a lot of money to go to a club and spend money they can just go there with a promise to pay later so let this be a lesson you know to every single person it does not matter what kind of business you run or how big or small your business is just do it well it's better to not sell at all to not sell your goods to be looking at your goods and yeah, yeah, you know than for you to sell on credit it makes no sense whatsoever it's better for you to not sell at all than for you to sell on credit and end up bankrupting yourself bankrupting your business and just you have nothing to show for years of business so let this be a lesson to everyone anybody who is not willing to buy and pay immediately does not have your best interest at heart. They are basically taking advantage of you based on your relationship with them. By doing so, they are showing that they don't trust you, they don't trust your business, they don't think you're going to succeed. So they are basically contributing to make your business go under so that you can go back home and sit at home. So those are not the kind of people that you even want to have in your life, people who do not support you. Anybody that really supports you must support you with your money. They must buy and pay immediately. Don't be selling on credit for anyone. So here's a quick update to the story. Popular singer Davido has reached out to Richard. Apparently, Davido is one of the big celebrities that owe him money. Uh, Davido owes him about 2 million naira. According to Richard, according to what he posted to his social media, Davido delivered a check to him today, clearing off all of his bills. So that's a good thing. But what I don't understand is why I go to a club and other drinks on credit. I don't understand if all of those things that I know about him, all of the things that they put out there, if all of those things are true, obviously he has a lot of money. So why can't he just pay once and, and be done with it? But anyways, I guess he saw the video of the guy lamenting, threatening to expose all the celebrities who are owing him. So he decided to do the needful and clear off his bill before the guy comes for him, which is a good thing. But all of this was unnecessary if he had just paid his bill as soon as he ordered those stuff, that, whatever it is that he ordered. But yeah. Anyways, moving on to another story about my favorite social media personality, socialite Bobrisky O'Shea Baddest. Hey, you guys already know, like, I like this guy. I don't care what anyone says. I don't care if you guys think that I am basically enabling him. I'm not enabling him. The guy doesn't need me to enable him. The guy doesn't need me promoting his lifestyle. He does an amazing job doing that on his own. I mean, seriously, you can hate Bobrisky all you want. But at the same time, you still can't take away from him that he has been able to maneuver social media. Everyone hears his name and they want to know what he's up to. To me, that's genius. Anyways, I digress. Let me go back. I ramble too much. Oh my God. When I see topics about Bobrisky, oh my God, I just kind of like, I can't wait to talk about it. So Bobrisky in a recent interview said that he regrets bleaching his skin. Take a look at this video and I'll be back with the rest of my thoughts. Change one thing about myself is going back to my complexion. Do you know why? Because the stress I use in rubbing my cream every day is terrible. So you guys just saw that apparently it takes a lot of effort and maintenance to keep that rubber skin going. Who knew? I'm just being sarcastic. I know guys. But honestly guys, I do commend his honesty and transparency in this matter. This is something that a lot of skin bleachers will never have the courage to come out and say it takes a lot of money, time, emotional sacrifice to bleach your skin. And even then, it still doesn't come out looking like the real thing. They still come out looking like roasted bullet for the most part. Don't let all of that Instagram filter or whatever fool you. When you see a bleaching person, you will know immediately when you see them in real life. You will know their skin is not even nothing works for them so it takes a lot sometimes you have to wonder why do they even do this why do they do this to themselves listen i'm not here to knock people who bleach their skin to each their own i'm just saying that it requires a lot of money 
time, emotional sacrifices and everything. And even then, it still does not look like the real thing. That's why a lot of people get addicted because they keep thinking that the more I do it, the more I look more natural. The more I keep going, the more I spend money, the more I spend time, the more I hit this knuckles and that knuckles, you know, the more it looks natural. But it never looks natural. If you know be Panadol, you know if you be like Panadol. That's what bleaching is. Again, I'm not trying to tell you what to do with your money. It's your money. It's your time. It's your body. You know, I never criticize people who bleach their skin because only they know the kind of insecurities and rejection that drives them into bleaching their skin. Something that I cannot begin to understand on a personal level. But just know that there are great risks involved in that level of alteration. You know, there are health reasons and so much more. Again, I'm not judging skin bleachers. It's not my place to judge anyone. I'm just impressed that Bobriski is opening up about it. He's opening up about some of the struggles. The sad part of it is that their skin will never be the same again, even when they eventually decide to stop bleaching. Once they stop bleaching, that natural melanin is gone for good and it's never coming back. So really, think wisely. If the King of Skin Bleachers Association of Nigeria, Bobriski himself, is speaking out, that means the struggle is so real and so serious. But like I said to each his own, do you, honey? On a bright side, Bobriski recently bought himself a Mercedes Benz. That's a way to make yourself feel better. I mean, seriously, that's a good way to console yourself for wrecking your own skin. <laughs> Anyways, this is what I'm going to end it to you guys. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Don't forget to share and subscribe if you have not already done so. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Ciao, guys. See, I want you to know that I'm from a beautiful